What's up guys, it's Lisa from Linguist Rising. We're gonna talk about something kind of confusing today. So like as a language learner, something I've really discovered in the past few years is I think I'm great at English, I'm a good writer, I love reading, you know, literate. Um, did well in all my college, you know, advanced expository writing in English classes. But something I've noticed with studying languages is there is so much about grammar we take for granted when English is your native language. When English is your native language, you know, we might be able to explain nouns and adjectives, adverbs and verbs, um, how to use a comma, you know, basic stuff. But when I'm studying Italian or Spanish or Arabic, other things become very apparent that I don't think about because so much of what we learn when we are taught a language from a child is osmosis, you know, just soaked up by the environment, unconscious understanding of it. So... Today, we're going to talk about the infinitive, because a lot of times in my classes, they'll be like, well, yes, the infinitive past participle, and I'm like, wait, what, what on earth are they saying? Okay, so the infinitive is the most basic form of a verb, and it's often preceded by the equivalent of the word to. The infinitive is often used with auxiliary verbs like can or should or would. And can swim uses the infinitive. The auxiliary verb is can in this case. These are things I don't think about in any way whatsoever. When I speak English, I just speak. And I think that's our goal as language learners is to become so fluent in the language we are studying, aka our target language, that it's that natural. You should eat your vegetables. Use the infinitive to eat with the auxiliary verb should to express obligation. We'll study for her test. Use the infinitive to study with the auxiliary verb will to express future action. It's important to learn about the infinitive because it's a basic building block of language. We'll encounter the infinitive often in writing and speaking. In Spanish, the infinitive ends in I-R, A-R, E-R, or O-R. Hablar, comer, vivir. Often in Spanish, we use the infinitive after prepositions, like antes de, meaning before, and después de, meaning after. In set phrases, after adjectives or nouns. After another verb, as a noun and in instructions. The Spanish infinitive often corresponds to the ing form in English when it comes after another verb. When you see a verb in the dictionary, it's usually listed under the infinitive form. Gusta estudiar español. I like to study Spanish. So in Italian, it's called infinito. Tell me everything in Italian doesn't somehow sound kind of cool and badass, right? In Italiano, the infinitive tends to end in are, or ire, or ere, parlare, vedere, finire. In Italian, the infinitive can function as a noun, adjective, or adverb in a sentence, and it can be used with auxiliary verbs to create different tenses or moods, just like in English. For example, parlare, to speak, can be used as a noun, as in. Il parlare è argentino. Il silencio è oro. Speaking is silver, silence is golden. Vedere, to see, can be used as an adjective, as in il film da vedere, the movie to see. Finire, to finish, can be used as an adverb, as in asturiento per finire il lavoro. He studied to finish the work. The infinitive in Italian can also be used in conjunction with prepositions to create idiomatic expressions, such as dopo aver mangiato, after eating, or prima di patire, before leaving. If you'd like to see separate videos on other elements of grammar in various languages, such as prepositions, you know, because I am definitely still learning on all of these, and I'd like to share what I learned. This basic understanding will help you in a language class when the instructor or tutor references the infinitive, and you won't be like, what are they talking about? Um, it's, I'm, I have a feeling it's like this in other languages too. Native speakers of other languages such as Spanish, Italian, French, etc. Let me know if you take for granted elements of grammar that you were born into knowing um, without having to study it and if it was a challenge when you started picking up other languages. Thanks for watching. This is Lisa from Linguist Writing.